this bill. Thank you, Senator Faruqi. Senator Green. Thank you, Deputy President. Um, I'm joining this debate today to, to talk about, uh, as many speakers have done, the personal stories of people who uh, have been on this card and are looking uh, through this legislation at the possibility of um, permanently being on the cashless debit card and the impact that that has had on their lives and will continue to have on their lives going forward. But I also want to take some time today to address some of the misconceptions about the way that this program is operating in Cape York, because I know that that has been referenced on many occasions. And um, I've actually spoken to the people who are running this program, and so I want to spend some time to talk about that today as well. I want to respond to some of the pretty disgusting things that uh, Senator Hanson said about people uh, on this card, but also just people generally who, who at times in their lives need to seek support from the government. Uh, and ultimately, we know that this legislation uh, will be voted on uh, and decisions will be made by our crossbench senators. So I want to take some time today to appeal to those crossbench senators about this legislation, because we know that it is a big decision to make and a lot of pressure would be bearing down from the government on those senators to make a decision to support this program. But can I say that this is not, this is not the legislation to let the government off. This is not the legislation to let the government get away with thuggish, cruel behaviour that treats vulnerable people as if they are worthless. This is not the legislation to let the government get away with pushing through a policy with no evidence in the last week of the parliament because they want to get this done before they go home for Christmas. This is not the legislation. We know that the Prime Minister is the architect of the robo-debt scheme. This is not the legislation for our crossbench senators to let this Prime Minister get away with yet another scheme that will hurt vulnerable Australians. But it is the personal stories that we need to listen to today, because the government will make assumptions or uh, assume um, that they know best, but we need to listen directly to the people who are affected by this legislation. Karen Griffiths, a mother of four from Queensland, told 7.30 report, I feel like in the government's eyes, I'm a lesser person. In the public's eyes, it's much, much worse. What have I ever done for the government to treat me this way, to treat thousands of other people this way? We've been branded as drug addicts and alcoholics and gamblers and dole bludgers. Most of us are just doing the best we can to get by. Extraordinary words. The government eyes I'm a lesser person. This government is treating people as if they are worth less. Bundaberg resident Emil Randall, who is 28 years old, was placed on the card in November 2019 after she finished full-time study and moved on to the job seeker payment. She said the decision to make the card permanent where she lives was difficult to accept. It's hard to put into words, she said. I guess hopelessness is the best word to describe it. I was putting everything into them ending the trial in December. I am really frightened for what it means for the future. Hopelessness. This is what this program does to vulnerable Australians. And the governments, governments are supposed to look after vulnerable people, not punish them. And if the government won't protect our most marginalised and disadvantaged Australians, then this Senate has to step up and do that job and block this legislation. That is the job that this Senate must do because we know that this government won't. This bill and this program has not had an evaluation made public for senators to consider about whether it even works in the first place. We've received antidotal evidence uh, from people who support the legislation, people who have an interest 
a very big interest in getting this legislation passed. But the Social Services Minister, Anne Rustin, admitted in the Senate that she didn't even read the report before deciding to make the cashless debit card permanent. The Morrison government has spent $2.5 million on a University of Adelaide report and didn't even wait for its findings before deciding to proceed. And that is because this is legislation that isn't about evidence-based policymaking. This is about ideology. This is about treating people like they are worthless. This speaks to the government's ideological obsession with income management and attacking the most vulnerable. It is the same ideological obsession which led to robo-debt and the harm, the mental harm that robo-debt caused. There have been many inquiries and reports into the effectiveness of income management in the past, and what the evidence has shown is that compulsory, broad-based income management is causing significant harm to communities. The Auditor-General has found no evidence that cashless debit card works and recommended better baseline data collection and monitoring. Independent analysis of the card by the University of South Australia made several findings, including that it has had no impact on reducing gambling or intoxicant abuse. Yes. Uh, it doesn't work. It is not doing what the government says it's going to do. And that is one of the reasons why the crossbench senators, senators in this chamber, should not support this legislation. The study found that the cost of implementing and administering the card came with little to no return on investment. So it costs money to deliver this card and to deliver this program. And we're talking about value to taxpayers because taxpayers provide this welfare in the first place. But it's actually taxpayers that are being ripped off because there is no return on investment for a program like this, because it doesn't set out to do what the government wants to achieve. It actually has the opposite effect. Very large amounts of evidence show that 13 years of new income management in the Northern Territory has had almost no positive impact. No positive impact, and yet the government is still trying to push this legislation through. The cashless debit card will affect two areas of Queensland directly, and I want to talk about both of those communities today. The Bundaberg and Harvey Bay on the Fraser Coast and communities in the Cape York region. And they're two very distinct communities, and the government has chosen to make the trials permanent in those two communities for various reasons, but they will have the same impacts. From the outset, can I say it reflects very poorly on the members in the other chamber who represent these communities in Queensland that they didn't have the guts to step up and speak about this legislation. They voted for it. They sat on the other chamber and they voted for the legislation, but they didn't have the guts to stand up and say why they were supporting it. And that's because they know that in their community there is no support for this card. They are waving these changes through without questioning or making it clear to the parliament where they stand. Now, those two personal stories that I read out at the beginning, they're from locals from the Bundaberg and Harvey Bay area. Many, many members of the community in Harvey Bay and Bundaberg have campaigned against this card, but they are not being listened to. The member for Hinkler and the member for Wide Bay have completely gone missing on this. And it really does go to show that in the last state election, these two areas swung towards Labor, and they were two areas where Labor actually picked up seats in the state election. And I mention that because it's a warning to this government that if you go down this road, if you go down this road, the community will respond. They will respond to this. You're not giving them an, a, a jobs program or a jobs plan, a way to create jobs. Unemployment is through the roof in these areas. They don't want income management. They want jobs. But that's not what this government is doing. 
if I can make some brief comments around the Cape York program, because it's very important that this Senate understands that this program in Cape York is completely different from what is being considered by this government to be rolled out across the country. There are 128 people in income management in communities like Arakoon, Cohen, Dumaji, Hopevale, Mossman Gorge. Importantly, the decision to move to income management is only made after case management and discussions with the person involved. It is also regularly reviewed, and this is completely different from how the cashless debit card operates in other parts of the country. It is not okay for this government to tie that program to the rest of these programs across the country to try to say that this legislation needs to be pushed through, otherwise that program in Cape York could fall over. We support that program in Cape York because the community members support that program. It is operating in a completely different way from the rest of the country. And if the government wanted to do the hard work, they could have taken that program out of this legislation and dealt with it separately. But they've put it in this legislation to try to put a timeline on passing this broader program through the Senate. Again, cruel behaviour, thuggish behaviour from this government. We know that this bill will impact First Nations people more than any other group. And it was disappointing to see those comments from Senator Hanson today. I know that maybe she has visited some of the communities in Cape York, but she certainly hasn't listened. She certainly hasn't listened to them, because if she did, she would not be supporting a broader rollout of this program. Even the members of Cape York understand that their program is separate from the one being rolled out across the country. And they don't like the idea of this government using them to justify putting more First Nations people in the Northern Territory into a difficult position. I started this speech by talking about personal stories. We have heard from people directly affected by this scheme. Can I say many of them are single parents? I grew up in a single parent household and I am proud of our life that we had and I'm proud of where I came from. I'm proud of the lessons that it taught me and the truth that comes from knowing that you're not better than anybody else and no one is better than you just because you had the luck to be born in another suburb. But I understand feeling just like Karen when she says, I feel like in the government's eyes I'm a lesser person. And the problem with feeling like that, feeling like you're worthless, is that it becomes self-defeating and it becomes self-fulfilling. It is hard to step up and to step out of poverty when you are treated like dirt by this government. There are many single parents who have fled their homes to escape domestic violence, and this card will prevent those families from starting a new life. I know I was a kid bundled into a car to leave. I've, I've stood there with friends and, and gotten all of their belongings together so that they could leave a home of domestic violence. One of the most important factors is having financial security. And if this government wants to tell people how they can and can't spend their money, then it will definitely impact on those single parents and the kids that they are seeking to protect. There are many, many single parents out there who this will impact. And I honestly understand what it's like to feel embarrassed, but I don't understand why a government would want to embarrass people. Governments are meant to lift people up, not make them feel worse about themselves. So I'm asking the crossbench, and particularly Senators Lambie and Senator Patrick, to not let this government get away with making people feel like this. They've done a dodgy job on this program and this legislation from the beginning. There's no evidence. They haven't even read the report. They've left it to the last minute. Well, let them wear it. Let the government wear this problem. Let them fix the problems that not passing this legislation creates. Let them cop it. Because if we pass this legislation, 
The people that are going to cop it are the most vulnerable and disadvantaged people in our entire country. Don't let the government get away with this. Do not let the government get away with ma making people feel absolutely Thank you, worthless. Senator. Thank you, Senator.